situation that you're battling right now, you do know that when you're in the presence of God, all these things fade away. All your problems fade away. And I'm here to tell you right now that we are in the presence of the Lord right now. And when we are in the presence of the Lord, all of our problems fade away. We know that when Christ comes back and when we stand before Him, now I want you to listen to this. We're going to lay down all of our achievements. We're going to lay down all of our success. All of our crown, all, every bit of that, we're going to lay at His feet. So what I'm telling you right now is if we're going to lay all of our success at His feet and all of our victories at His feet, what makes you think that your problem is not going to bow to Him? Come on, I'm speaking to some people in here tonight. What makes you think that your problem or your storm is not going to bow to Him? I'm here to tell you tonight that when you're in the presence of Almighty God, your problems have to bow. So tonight, I don't want you to focus on anything else but Him in here tonight. And everybody said, Amen. Alright, so now, John chapter 20, verse 24. Now right before this, right here in verse 24, we read that Jesus appears to the disciples after He's rose from the dead, okay? But Thomas wasn't with them. It says right here, it says... And one of the disciples, Thomas, nicknamed the twin. Or if you're in the King James, it says Didymus, which is translated in the Greek, twin. Okay? So Thomas, nicknamed the twin, was not with the others when Jesus came. And they told him, we have seen the Lord. But he replied, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands and put my fingers into them, and placed my hand into the wound in his side. Okay? Now, raise your hand if you've all read this story before. Now, what is this story known for? Doubting Thomas, right? Doubting Thomas. Anytime that that we begin to get doubt in our heart, what does somebody call us? You doubting Thomas. You just like doubting Thomas. But tonight, I want to tell you something. We will go through battles, okay? We will go through problems. But I'm here to tell you tonight, our greatest battle that we will ever face is not the enemy. Our greatest battle that we will ever face is not people that's in our lives. Our greatest battle that we will ever face is not anything that's around us. But I'm here to tell you tonight, the greatest battle that you will ever face in your life is you. Okay? Nobody else, I've said this so many times, nobody else can keep me from my vision in God but me. Nobody else can stop me from the dream that God has given me but me. The enemy can't stop me. People around me can't stop me. The only person that can stop me is me. Now you notice right here what Thomas was nicknamed. And this is not the only time that he was nicknamed this. He was nicknamed the twin. Now you say, now why is that? Why does it keep saying, anytime it mentions Thomas, it mentions Thomas the twin, nicknamed the twin. Why is that? I'm here to tell you tonight that every one of us have a twin mentality about us, okay? Now Thomas right here, if you know anything about the disciple Thomas, you will know that he has a twin. We know why he's named the twin, because he has a twin mentality. You say, what is that? They're both the same person, but he's got up and down. One earlier scripture, it says that when Jesus was getting ready to go to raise Lazarus from the dead, all the disciples before that were saying, you know that the Jewish leaders were getting ready to kill us at that place. You're wanting to go back there? And when Jesus is getting ready to go, Thomas says, let's go with him and die with him. So Thomas has got this faith about him that's unshaken. He's got this boldness about, hey, we're going to go wherever Christ goes. Even if it's death, we're going to go with him. But now you read right here in this passage, he said, I am not going to believe it. They came to him and they said, hey, let me tell you, Thomas, we've seen the Lord. He's back. He's risen from the dead. He's he's conquered. And Thomas said, I'm not going to believe it until I see the nail prints in his hand. Until I feel them for myself. Until I feel the Lord for myself, I am not going to do it. So now you see this twin mentality, and you know why they're naming him twin. Because every single one of us, and we can call him Doubting Thomas all we want to, but every one of us are guilty of the exact same thing. 
You say, what is that? One minute you're up, the next minute you're down. One minute you're believing, and the next you're not. One minute you've got boldness about you, and the next minute you're fearful. One minute you got it all together, and then the next you're all to pieces. What am I telling you? You've got that twin mentality about you. One side of you is ready to believe God for anything, but the other side of you is ready to turn and run away and not have to face tomorrow. Am I talking to anybody in here tonight? We've got this twin mentality about us, and if we're ever going to be more than a conqueror, then we've got to destroy this mentality. Because let me tell you something. One thing that you notice about twins is, and we're talking on a human perspective now, when, pe when you have a set of twins, what are they known for? Being twins, right? They're, they're not separated. When people talk about them, they don't even classify them as their own identity. What do they call them? The twins, right? The twins did this and the twins did that. They don't have their own personality and they don't have their own identity. Can I tell you something in here today? There's many people in here today and out there that have lost their identity. They've lost their identity. They don't know who they are. So you know what happens? Let me tell you. The enemy will tell you all the time. Have you noticed this? That he will tell you who you are? He does it all the time, don't he? He tells you who you are. You're depressed. You're sick. You're broke. You've got no joy. You're depressed. You know, just one thing after another, he tells you who you are. And see, if you've got that twin mentality about you, if you're just like Thomas in this story, you're going to believe what he said. Because a part of you says, well, that's just who I am, right? That's just who I am. But see, here's the thing. Before you got saved, you were living by nothing but the other twin. Okay? And that's the flesh. Okay? One twin's the spirit, the other twin's the flesh. Before you got saved and knew Christ, you were living by the twins, other twins' opinion. Anything that happened, you went by their thoughts. Anytime anything that came to play or came to pass in your life, you went by the other twins' decision. Didn't you? Everything the flesh wanted to do, you done it. You did everything by the flesh. But we know that when we give our life to Christ, what happens? We say no to the flesh and yes to God. Right? The flesh don't like that. The flesh doesn't like that. Because the flesh has been in control for all these years. When problems come, the flesh wants to be afraid. The flesh wants to doubt. Because life has taught it this and that. Right? See, you've got to make up your mind in here today. I had people tell me all my life that I had to be sick. But I refuse to believe that. I've had people tell me all my life, you got to worry, you got to be afraid, you got to doubt, you got to, you know, just barely make it from paycheck to paycheck because you know we got a bad economy, that's just the way life is. How many's told that every single day? We're told that every single day. People try to, and they might not do it on purpose, but every single day people try to put identity on us. They try to tell us who we are. God told you you can do this or that. Don't you know you can't do that? Don't you know where you come from? Don't you know what your last name is? And we, we go by this, don't we? <coughs> so we've still got that twin mentality about us. That one minute we're serving God, the next we're all to pieces. One minute we're ready to believe God and stand on His Word, and then the next we're ready to turn tail and run. Am I talking to anybody in this place in here tonight? This twin mentality about us. And like I said... Everything on us is trying to put an identity on us. But you know what? So is God. So is God. While the enemy's always trying to put an identity on you and tell you who you are, can I tell you something? God is doing the exact same thing. God, when God says to you when you got sickness in your body and He says, by my stripes you're already healed, what do we do so many times? No, 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 I'm not healed. Or when he says, you're going to be blessed coming and going, oh, I can't be blessed, not me. Maybe uh, Joe down the street, but not me, I can't be blessed. Or when he comes and tells you, you are more than a conqueror, I'm going to give you joy unspeakable and full of glory. Oh, no, not with everything that I'm going through right now. How can I have joy? Every time God tries to tell us who we are, we tell him who we say the enemy or who the enemy says we are. Don't we? We do that every single time. Every single time God tries to tell us who we are. 
Now notice what Jesus did right here. And I love this because he didn't, he didn't do like we do so many times. When Thomas said, I'm not going to believe it. I'm, I'm not going to believe it until I see some results. Until I see it, the facts before my eyes. Many of us would have said, well, bless God, we ain't fooling with you. Wouldn't we? We would have done that, wouldn't we? Well, we ain't gonna, you just go on to the house then if you ain't going to believe God. But Jesus went straight to him. The very next passage, and you can flip the page if you want to, the very next passage, Christ went to him. And when he appeared there, and notice what it said right there. Notice it said that the door was locked, but yet Jesus still got in the house. I love that because that tells me that he will not let anything stop him from getting to me. Are you hearing me in here tonight? He won't let anything, I don't care what's going on around me, He's not going to let anything stop him from getting to me, from getting my attention. One thing about it you can know is that God will get your attention one way or the other. He will get your attention. He can get it the easy way or he can get it the hard way. So he comes straight to Thomas and he says, Thomas, feel for yourself, buddy. Feel for yourself. Feel the nail prints in my hand. Put your, put your hand into my side and feel. And see, what did Thomas say? In amazement and excitement, he said, My Lord and my God. My Lord and my God. Now, we worked for a guy one time. He was from Nigeria. Okay? Funny guy. Worked for him. And what he would do was, anytime he got excited, and anytime he was amazed by something, he would say, My Lord and my God. That's what he'd say every time. My Lord and my God. And one day, it was just a funny story. One day we was trying to move this stump because we was doing landscape for him. And we was putting it on a rollback. And the guy that was driving the rollback, he went up to him. He said, how much does one of these cost brand new? And I forgot how much it was. But when he told him the price, he went, my Lord and my God. And the driver said, that's exactly what I said. <laughs> but see, this, what I'm trying to say is, is that's exactly what Thomas was doing. He was excited. Why was he excited? Because he knew, now he knew that he didn't have to live with that. He didn't no longer have to be nicknamed the twin. Okay? And I'm here to tell you tonight, you no longer have to be nicknamed the twin. You don't have to be labeled as one of those that has faith one minute and then doubt in the next. You don't have to be labeled as one of those that is believing God for something and is not afraid and not ashamed one minute and then running and saying, I don't want no more of this the next. You can be one of those that says, I have joy, and I, I have joy, and I have peace. And not one of those that runs and says, well, you know what, I just can't make it. You don't have to have that twin mentality about you. Because let me tell you something, God made you to have an identity. What's wrong today, we don't know who we are. That's what's wrong. You ever heard that? If you ever find out who you are, the enemy's in trouble, right? How many ever heard that? If you, ever, if you just ever get the revelation of who you are, then the enemy is in trouble. Can I tell you something? That is a fact. That is a fact. He tries. He works day and night. Day and night. So you don't find out who you are. Because if you ever really found out who you are in Christ, if you ever got your identity in Christ, then you would not... You would not fall down to the enemy so many times. You would not give in. You would not throw in the towel, but you would be bold about you. What am I talking about? I'm talking about being filled with the Holy Ghost. Being filled with His Spirit. Don't you understand that we are made... How many has ever read that scripture where it says that we are now new creatures in Him? All old things are passed away and all things have become new. How does that happen? It happens through the power of the Spirit. That's how it happens. And when we tap into that, here's what happens. We lose our twin mentality. We lose our twin mentality. When Thomas said, my Lord and my God, he got a revelation about him. He finally figured out, just like I said maybe a week or so ago, he finally found out that Jesus really was the resurrection. He found out what it meant when Christ said, before they went to Lazarus, and he said, I am the resurrection, and I am the life. See, I found out something in here today, okay? I found out something. That we know that rev or, uh, resurrection means to bring something back to life, amen? 
That's what it means. But I've also found out that when I let His resurrection power be manifested in me, it also puts some things to death. Come on now. It puts some things to death. You say, what is that? It puts to death. Well, oh my God, I'm here to tell you tonight that, that uh, doubt has to be put to death. Okay? Fear has to be put to death. Torment and, and, and no joy and misery and sorrow has to be put to death. Are you hearing what I'm saying in here today? And when you get the, the resurrection power of Christ manifested in your life, it not only brings you to life, but it puts some things to death. Why do we get baptized? Does anybody know? We get baptized to signify something, don't we? We are signifying that when we go down in the water, our old self is dying. Okay? All of our ambitions, all of our, 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 our lust for all these things, it dies. And when we come back up, we're to be what? A new creature, right? It is a sign letting God know, hey, we are letting go of the past and going to the future. Now, when you know the resurrection power of Christ, what happens is that other twin that you used to live with all your life, he's put to death. I'm here to tell you today, turn to your neighbor and say, there needs to be a burial in here. There needs to be a burial take place in here. And that's that side of you that never wants to do anything for God. That's that side of you that's scared to jump out and take the next step. It needs to be put to death in here. Amen? It needs to be put to death. And how is it going to be put to death? By the resurrection power. Isn't that amazing how something that's life-giving can also put some things to death? Now notice, what, listen what this says right here. In Romans chapter 8, verse 12, he says, So dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation whatsoever to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. For if you keep on following it, you will perish. But if through the power of the Holy Spirit, which we've already talked about, you turn from it and its evil deeds, you will live. <clears throat> For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. So, you should not be like a cowering, fearful slave. You should behave instead like God's very own children, adopted into His family, calling Him Father, or Dear Father, Abba Father. For His Holy Spirit speaks to us deep in our hearts and tells us that we are God's children. And since we are His children, we will share His treasures, for everything God gives to His Son, Christ is ours too. Wow. But if we are to share His glory, we must also share in His suffering. So what is that saying right there? God's trying to tell you who you are. All them times when you think, hey, I'm a doubter, I'm a quitter, I'm a scaredy cat. When you begin to label yourself as all these things, you're not labeling who you are. You're not la that's not who you are. You say, what is my identity? I am who God says that I am. And it's time that we get to the place where we stop listening to what everybody else says. We stop listening to the enemy. We stop listening to what life has taught us and start listening to what God has said about us. Come on now, is anybody hearing me in here? It's time that we listen to who God says we are. You are not a twin in here. You are not to be labeled as just a twin. You're not, you are identical. You're not, I mean, you're not identical. You have your own identity. Nobody can be you but you. Did you know that nobody can fulfill the purpose on your life but you? You say, God don't need me. He, I, I, I've failed so many times. I've made so many mistakes. He just needs to move on to the next person. Nobody can do what you do in the Lord. You say, well, there's many preachers. There's, there's many singers, there's many prayer warriors. But nobody can do it how you do it. Because God has placed a specific thing on you. He's, he's placed a specific thing on you. He has given you your own identity. The problem is, is we want to compare ourselves. We say so many times, well, I wish I could be like so-and-so. They seem like they got it all together. I wish I could be like them and, and be... A, you want to know why that they always seem to have it together and you don't? Because you keep comparing yourself to them. 
You keep comparing yourself to them. You're not them and they aren't you. Only you can be you. And only you can go down the path that God has for you. Turn to your name and say, you've got an identity. You've got an identity. You're not a twin. You've got an identity. You are one of a kind. Now, let's read another passage right here. In Galatians. Now, listen to this. Galatians chapter 5. It says, So, this I say to you, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. The old sinful nature loves to do evil, which is just opposite from the, what the Holy Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are opposite from what our sinful nature desires. These two forces, now listen, these two forces are constantly fighting each other. And your choices are never free from this conflict. But when you are directed by the Holy Spirit, you are no longer subject to the law. Notice what that said right there. Let's take the first part of this. He said, if you walk in the Spirit and not in the flesh, in other words, if you put your twin to death, leave him in the coffin and don't bring him back up, you say, what are you talking about? Somebody does you dirty, somebody does something wrong to you, what do you do? Instead of praying about it, something hits you hard, it gets to you. Instead of praying about it, instead of...
situation that you're battling right now, you do know that when you're in the presence of God, all these things fade away. All your problems fade away. And I'm here to tell you right now that we are in the presence of the Lord right now. And when we are in the presence of the Lord, all of our problems fade away. We know that when Christ comes back and when we stand before Him, now I want you to listen to this. We're going to lay down all of our achievements. We're going to lay down all of our success. All of our crown, all, every bit of that, we're going to lay at His feet. So what I'm telling you right now is, if we're going to lay all of our success at His feet, and all of our victories at His feet, what makes you think that your problem is not going to bow to Him? Come on, I'm speaking to some people in here tonight. What makes you think that your problem or your storm is not going to bow to Him? I'm here to tell you tonight that when you're in the presence of Almighty God, your problems have to bow. So tonight, I don't want you to focus on anything else but Him in here tonight. And everybody said, Amen. All right. So now, John chapter 20, verse 24. Now, right before this, right here in verse 24, we read that Jesus appears to the disciples after he's rose from the dead, okay? But Thomas wasn't with them. It says right here, it says, And one of the disciples, Thomas, nicknamed the twin. Or if you're in the King James, it says Didymus, which is translated in the Greek, twin, okay? So Thomas nicknamed the twin was not with the others when Jesus came. And they told him, We have seen the Lord. But he replied, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands and put my fingers into them and place my hand into the wound in his side. Okay? Now, raise your hand if you've all read this story before. Now, what is this story known for? Doubting Thomas, right? Doubting Thomas.